Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Six Months of Set Theory and Higher Order Logic. This is Logic 301. We are in month number three, looking at piano arithmetic. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the proof of the principle of mathematical induction, aka piano postulate number five. Now, for those of you that are paying close attention, you may notice that we skipped over postulate number four and went straight from three to five. No worries. We are going to get to postulate four, but postulate four is going to take a little bit more work to prove. It's actually going to take a lot more work to prove. We're going to need some intermediate lemas in there that we're going to prove. So we're going to jump briefly ahead to get to postulate five. This is also called the principle of mathematical induction. This principle claims that if a set contains zero and for all sets, if that set contains one set, it contains its successor, then that set contains all natural numbers. In other words, for all A, if zero is a member of A, and for all sets N, if N is a member of A, then its successor is a member of A, then for all M, if M is a natural number, M is a member of A. This is a bit more complicated than some of the proofs we've done so far, but it should not be too bad. We're going to use an indirect proof. If you want to give it a try on your own, pause the video now. But if not, let's get started. So, like I said, this is our conclusion. We're going to use an indirect proof. So we will assume the negation of that statement and draw a line going down. We're then going to use a change of quantifier to pull that negation inside and change our quantifier from a for all to a there exists. Then we will existentially instantiate our A. We'll take it from a capital A to a lowercase a to show that it's been uh, existentially instantiated. Then we're going to go ahead and use implication. You'll note that the main operator in here outside of the negation in the front is a uh, implication. We're going to use implication to change that to disjunction and put a negation in front of the antecedent. Then we're going to go ahead, because we have a big disjunction that's negated in the front, we're going to use De Morgan's law to distribute that negation across to the two halves of that disjunction and turn it into a conjunction in the middle. It's great when you have a conjunction as the main operator somewhere because it means that you can simplify things out. You always want to try when you have these big long statements to get it into a conjunction and simplify it out. So we have from premise five, the first half of that conjunction and also from premise five, the second half of that conjunction. We're going to move forward with what we got from premise six. We're going to use double negation to get rid of those two negations because that gives us, once again, a conjunction that we can split apart even further. We will simplify premise eight down to zero is a member of A, and we're also going to simplify premise eight down to this for all N, N is a member of A implies the successor of N is a member of A. Now we will use a change of quantifier on premise seven to move that negation inside the quantifier and change from a for all to there exists. And we're going to existentially instantiate M as B. We haven't used B before, and so we're allowed to existentially instantiate it in there because it's a new variable. So we have it's not the case that B is a member of N implies B is a member of A. Next, as we did before, because our main operator in there is an implication sign, we're going to change that to a disjunction. We'll use De Morgan's law to distribute the negation outside across the two and leave us with a conjunction in the middle. We like conjunctions because we can simplify them out. We will get it's not the case that it's not the case that B is a member of the set of all natural numbers. And therefore, by double negation, B is a member of the set of all natural numbers. Then we will simplify premise 14 again to get it's not the case that B is a member of A. Now, we just cleaned up and got a lot of pieces out of this underlying formula, but we don't quite have enough to do what we need to do. We need to bring in the definition that we defined earlier for the set of all natural numbers in order to do that. So we're going to bring in n def, the definition of the set of all natural numbers for all c. c is a member of the set of all natural numbers is identical to for all d. If d is inductive, then c is a member of d. Conceptually, that's how we defined the set of all natural numbers. The set of all natural numbers is the set such that all of its members are members of all inductive sets. 
we'll universally instantiate C to B here because we do have B as a member of the set of all natural numbers. So we want to see what things, given that B is a member of the set of all natural numbers, what are the kinds of properties that B should have. We'll then use identity from 16 and 19 to get just the second half of that identity formula for all D. If D is inductive, then B is a member of D. Then we're going to universally instantiate A into D and show that A is inductive implies that B is a member of A. You'll remember from premise 17 we have it's not the case that B is a member of A. And so we're going to use this because we also have enough pieces of this puzzle to show that A is inductive. If A is inductive and it's not the case that B is a member of A, then this implication that we've just shown must be false and we have a contradiction. So let's see how we can do that exactly. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to say what the definition of an inductive set is. For all E, E is inductive is identical to the null set as a member of E, and for all N, N is a member of E implies that the successor of N is a member of E. Hopefully those look familiar. If we universally instantiate E to A, you should see that we have those two halves of the conjunction. There's a couple ways we could do this. This is how we're going to do it. We're going to actually use premise 21 and 23 identity. You see in 21 we have A is inductive. We have A is inductive in 23 is equal to. So we're going to take that whole second half of that identity in premise 23 and we're going to put it into the first half of the implication in premise 21 to get this long piece. The null set is a member of A and for all N N is a member of A implies the successor of N is a member of A implies B is a member of A. Then we're going to use modus tollens to run that back because we have the negation of B is a member of A. So we get it's not the case that the null set is a member of A and for all N as a member of A implies that the successor of N is a member of A. Modus tollens. We will once again use De Morgan's law to distribute that negation across the conjunction. We will use our definition of zero and premise nine because we did have zero as a member of A. Our definition of zero says that zero is just another word for the null set. Then we will use disjunctive syllogism to show that, well, we've negated one of the halves of the disjunction, so the other one must be true. It's not the case that for all n, n is a member of A implies the successor of n is a member of A. But we already had the claim that for all n, n is a member of A implies the successor of n is a member of A. It's a long contradiction, but it is a contradiction. Premise 10, premise 26, conjunction. That gets us our contradiction, which means we can pop out of this indirect proof and get the conclusion we were looking for. For all A, 0 is a member of A, and for all N, N is a member of A implies that the successor of N is a member of A implies that for all M, M is a member of the set of all natural numbers implies that M is a member of A, also known as the principle of mathematical induction. Whew, that was a long one, but don't worry, they're going to get longer. Up next, we have the transitivity of the natural numbers. Don't go about trying to prove postulate four on your own. There's a couple lemas we're going to need. If you can on your own, it's going to be a hard attempt and something hard to try, but you're encouraged to do so. But if you don't want a gigantic challenge, Stay with us, follow along, and we're going to prove a couple of lemas that are going to help us get there. First up, the transitivity of natural numbers. Watch this video and more here at carnades.org, and stay skeptical, everybody.